Okay, I want to show you what an indirect proof is. Before I get to the technical stuff and filling in the blanks here, I just want to describe it to you. So let's say that you're trying to prove that not all apples are green. Okay, I want to prove that not all apples are green. Well, one way I could do that is by pulling out a red apple and saying, see, not all apples are green. Okay, that's a really simplistic um, version of an indirect proof, which is sometimes called a proof by contradiction. It's the same thing. Okay, um, and what that means is what I can do, I, I had the, the, the statement, not all apples are green. Well, I can take the negation of that. The negation of not all apples are green would be all apples are green, and then I can show that all apples are green is false with this counter example. Because here's a red apple, right? So not all apples are green. Therefore, since the negation is false, what I'm trying to prove must be true. And what I was trying to prove is not all apples are green. Okay? So um, there's three steps to an indirect proof. First thing you're going to do is assume the negation of what you're trying to prove is true. Okay, assume the negation is true. Okay, um, so remember the negation has the opposite truth value. So, like the, the statement, um, it is raining. Um, the negation of that would be it is not raining. It's sunny is not the negation. It's not quite the opposite because you know it can it can be cloudy and not raining, right? Okay, so um, then we're gonna find um, a Contradiction. That's why it's called a proof, a proof by contradiction sometimes. So I'm going to show that that the negation being true doesn't work somehow. Okay, and then since the negation is false, then what you're trying to prove must be true. The original statement must be true because um, they have opposite truth values. Okay. So let's put this in a mathematical context and we'll, we'll see how this goes, okay? We're going to do an indirect proof to show that an obtuse triangle cannot have more than one obtuse angle. Okay, here's what we're trying to prove. And we're going to do this with these three steps, A, B, and C. Okay, so first we want to assume that the negation of this is, is true. So I'm going to assume that an obtuse triangle this said cannot have so to make it a negation I want to say it can have and I didn't really leave myself enough space there but I'm just gonna do that like so okay it can have more than one obtuse angle okay and then I'm gonna see what happens if I explore this let's think through what would happen if a triangle had more than one obtuse angle okay in triangle ABC angle A and angle B are obtuse angles let's just let those be our up two obtuse angles Okay, that means that angle A is going to have a measure of more than 90 degrees, and so will angle B. That's what makes them obtuse angles. Okay, so if angle A and angle B are both more than 90 degrees, that means when I add them together, their sum is going to be more. Oops, it's going to be more than 180 degrees. Okay, and now we've got a little problem here, right? This can't be true because in a triangle the three angles always add up to exactly 180 degrees. And we haven't even talked about angle C. There's nothing left for angle C, right? So in any triangle, the sum of the angles is 180 degrees. Therefore, triangle ABC cannot be a triangle. So I just sh showed that having two obtuse angles does not work, okay? So then since the negation is false, an obtuse triangle cannot have have more than one obtuse angle, right? So in your last step, all you do always is say, since the negation is false, then whatever you're trying to prove is true. Okay, and that's the idea. All right. All right, moving on to a new topic. We got the longest side theorem. This is a pretty simple idea. In any triangle, the longest side is opposite the largest angle. Okay, the smallest side, or the shortest side, however you want to put it, is across from the smallest angle. 
Okay, and you can guess the mediums go together then, right? Because there's only one side and one angle left. I mean, the mediums are across from each other. Okay, so that idea is going to allow us to order angles and sides from least to greatest, or from greatest to least, actually. So this one, we're going from smallest to largest for the angles. I don't have any of the angle measures. And let's assume this is not to scale. So I don't want to get out a protractor and start measuring these, or even do it by eye. I want to go based on the numbers that I have, OK? So first thing I'm going to do is just compare the three numbers. Here's my smallest number, right? This is my medium number and my large number. And then I'm just going to say, OK, if this is the smallest side, that's going to be across from the smallest angle. So there's my small angle. Okay, the medium side would be across from the medium angle. And the large side would be across from the large angle. Okay, and now we can order these, right? So I'm going smallest to largest. Here's my three angles. So my smallest angle is angle C, medium is angle A, and large is angle B. And boom, there we go. That's the uh, angles listed from least to greatest, okay? This time we're doing the sides from, and again, don't get out a ruler because this might not be to, to scale. Let's use the numbers we have. So I'm gonna do the same kind of thing. I'm just comparing the three angles. So there's my smallest angle. So this means this must be my smallest side, okay? This is my medium angle. So there's my medium side, largest angle. So this is the largest side. And now I'm ready to go. So the small side would be AB. Medium was BC. And the largest was AC. OK, there it is. OK, so let's um, head to the second page to do another example. Which we'll leave that on the screen for a bit. And we've got a problem. Um, we're going to use the same idea it's is a little bit more complicated because we've got two triangles that are joined together okay um so first off i could actually find this missing angle if i wanted to and yeah 30 plus 60 is 90 so i'd got i'd have another 90 degrees to get to 180 so if you want to fill that in you can okay all right, so um, what the way I'm going to think about this is by um, separating these two triangles. Okay, some people are just going to look at all of the numbers and say, okay, all these numbers, 100 is the largest side, so that must be across from the largest segment. Well, let's look at this segment. Clearly, that's not the largest, I mean, it doesn't appear to be the largest segment in the whole picture. So it doesn't quite work like that um, just looking at all the numbers. Because um, there's a segment that's in both of the triangles. So first thing I'm going to do is just split the triangles. So I've got the one that I have, the orange triangle. And you don't necessarily have to draw them separately, but it's going to really help me to explain my thinking here. Um, it's not a bad idea to do it. It might be helpful for you. Okay, and then let me label the vertices here. Okay, so I've just separated those two triangles. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is look, figure out, I'm, I'm ordering all of the sides, so all of the segments in here from smallest to largest. So within this um, orange triangle, I can see, okay, 30 is the smallest, so that's across from my smallest side, 60 is the medium, so there's my medium here, and 90 is the largest, that's across from my large. Okay, and let's do the same thing over here, 39 is the smallest, then 41, then 100. Okay, so um, when I'm looking at trying to find the smallest segment, I've got two options in this picture. Okay, it's either going to be BC or BD. So how do I decide between those two? Well, 
that's where the shared side is going to come in handy, okay? Because one of those is going to be the shared side. So I want to see, are both of these segments in one of the triangles? And they actually are, right? Because this segment, yeah, it's over here in this triangle, but BC is also in this triangle, okay? So now I can compare these two. These were my two candidates for smallest overall. And between those two, I know, hey, this one's the small in this triangle, and that's the large. So this one's going to be my overall smallest, okay? So that's the key, is, is using the um, segment that's in both triangles so that you can figure out which of your two candidates is overall smallest, okay? So now I can say, okay, this one's overall smallest, BD, and then I'm, I'm just gonna go through this whole triangle to get me to the red piece, so BD, then CD, this side, and this side, which is BC, okay? And now I'm into this triangle, I've jumped to this triangle because I'm on BC over here, and I can say, okay, that's my smallest there, then my medium over here, and then my large over there would be a C. Now I've got all of those segments ordered from smallest to overall, overall largest. Okay, let's move on. So here is a, um, this next problem, we did a problem similar to this in an earlier chapter, but it's gonna come in handy in a minute. Okay, so this said, could these be sides of a triangle? Well, you know, you can draw a triangle and put 3, 4, or 10. But that doesn't mean that it's actually going to work in the real world, okay? So what I like to do on these problems is take the largest side. And, you know, you could get out a ruler if you wanted to, but I'm just going to draw any old segment and say, okay, this is going to be 10. And then I'm going to think, well, do I have enough to make a bridge using the three and the four, okay? So let's link, let's say I'll put my three over there and I'm just kind of eyeballing this. If that's 10, that looks like it might be about three, okay? And then from the other side, I'm gonna put the four and I'm gonna see if I can make this reach. And well, three plus four is only seven. So I don't have enough to bridge the 10, right? So this is not gonna work, this is gonna collapse, it's not gonna be a triangle, or it'll just stay up like that, but it won't close into a triangle. So my answer here is going to be no, okay? And that brings us to the triangle inequality theorem, which is really just this idea. And this says that in any triangle, the sum of the two smallest sides must be greater than the largest side. So the two smallest sides are the ones I'm building the bridge with, and I have to be able to, the largest side's the river, has, has, has to, I have to have enough bridge to get over the river, okay? All right, so let's use this on uh, these examples. Could these be sides of a triangle? So here's my bridge pieces, here's my river. I'm just thinking, is this statement true? Is four plus six greater than eight? Yeah, it is. So my answer here is yes. Okay, justify with an inequality? Well, I already did, there it is, okay? All right, let's try this. Now, what some people are gonna do here is say, well, four plus 12 is greater than six. That's true, so yes, but hang on. Got a mistake there. Because 12 is not one of my bridge pieces. Remember, it's not always gonna, they're not always gonna be in order from least to greatest. There's a little trick here, right? These are my bridge pieces. Those are my two smalls. 12 is actually the river piece. So I'm going to say 4 plus 6 is greater than 12, and hang on, no it's not, right? It is not, because I don't have enough bridge to cross that river, okay? All right, last one, let's see, 10 is the largest, that's my river, those are my bridge pieces. All right, some people go for a yes on this one, but 10 is not greater than 10. So this is going to be a no. Okay, I'm gonna draw a picture of this one. To try to show you why. Here's my four piece. There's my six piece. I can make them connect, but it flattens out into a line segment. My bridge would be floating on the water. So it's not gonna be a triangle then anymore, okay? 
So it needs to be greater than, not equal to. All right. Next up, find the possible lengths for the third side of a triangle with side lengths four and six. Well, you know, I, I've seen um, some different options. Um, I do know that it could be eight, right? But would nine work? Would four plus six be greater than nine? Yeah. Would four plus six be greater than seven? Yep. How about 7.3 and 7.4? Yep. So I don't want to start writing a list because I'm going to go on for infinity. There's, there's um, a lot of these. What I'm going to do instead is um, express this as, a, um, as an inequality. Okay. So here's, it's pretty easy to do. Um, here's my system. I'm going to find the minimum value that my third side could be, and I'm going to find the maximum value that my third side could be. Okay. All right. And um, all you have to do to get the minimum is take your two bridge pieces, or actually two sides. I don't know that these are bridge pieces. One of them could be a river piece. But I'm going to take the two sides I know and subtract. Okay, and that gives me two. Then I'm going to take those same two sides, add them together. Okay, and make sure for your minimum, don't we don't want a negative number. So take the, the bigger of the two minus the smaller. Okay, so I wouldn't want to do four minus six. Okay. Now, this third side can't actually be 10. I just showed that on part C. But it could be anything less than 10. It could be 9. It could be 9.9. .9. It could be 9.99999. Okay. So um, 2 actually wouldn't work either because it, my um, triangle would collapse. But anything in between those two numbers is going to work. Okay. So um, the way I'm going to express this, 2 centimeters is my smallest possible. Okay. And then I'm going to put x for the third side, and then 10 centimeters, and I do want the, um, the units in there because this isn't miles or meters or whatever, right? And um, I know that it's gonna be in between those two, so my third side has to be less than 10, but my third side is gonna be greater than two. So there is my inequality. Now this is saying on a number line, anywhere between two and 10, without including those endpoints, is going to work. So 2.1 works, 9.9 .9 works, Anything in between those two values is going to work. Okay, so you can try this one if you want. You can pause the video if you want. Um, I'm just going to get to it. Okay, there I've got my minimum and maximum. Now it's going to be between those two. So there. We go. And that is the end of the section. I will see you next time.